We left Lithgow, two hours west of Sydney, on a clear, cool July morning on our two-day Caves to Caves adventure with Great Divide Tours. We were just a small convoy of three vehicles. Travelling with our tour leader Alex were Olga, Amelia and Davy. In the Toyota Fortuna were Todd, Leanne and their girls Sarah and Anna. Anne and I followed up in our Nissan patrol. After travelling south on the Great Western Highway, Alex led us off the highway onto a pleasant track that meandered through undulating grazing land. Anne and I were enjoying this idea of being taken on a trip with all the arrangements and decisions made for us, especially in an area that was new to us. The track was now gravel as we began to climb into more mountainous terrain, leaving the cattle behind. We were now travelling on a section of what is known as Six Foot Track. It was put in as a bridle track in the late 1800s and was made six foot wide to accommodate coaches travelling from Katoomba to the Janolan Caves. The track soon came to an open area named the Cox's River Reserve, which is also a campground. If staying for a day or two, there are plenty of walks, waterfalls and lookouts to explore. Or you could just relax down by Cox's River with its reflections and gentle flowing stream. After a short break, we continued along the track which followed a ridge line for some time. then drop down into valleys with the occasional creek crossing. At times it climbed to altitudes where there were signs of recent snowfall. Then, back on the bitumen, we were soon heading down the Janolan Caves Road. This road is so busy and narrow that it is closed in one direction for a few hours a day. The introduction to the caves is through the Grand Arch, which opens into an area known as Devil's Coach House. The first building you see through the arch is the impressive Grand Hotel, known as Caves House which had its beginnings in the late 1800s. We're here on the Great Divide Tours Cave to Cave Tour. Um, we kicked off at Lithgow and we're going to end up at Wombian Caves. And at the moment we're at the beautiful Janolan Caves. And very, very soon we're going to take off and meet our guide and we're going to have a look at the Chifley Caves. So we're really looking forward to it. But before we did that, we had some time to look around. The Carlotta Arch is a large and spectacular cave remnant that overlooks Blue Lake. It is believed that the arch was named in honour of a daughter of Surveyor General P. F. Adams, who took some of the earliest photos of the caves. One can only imagine the wonderment of these early visitors as they pushed through bush and scrambled over rocks to view these amazing formations. The meeting point for the cave tours is within the Grand Arch itself. The caves are a network of ancient limestone tunnels, subterranean rivers and caverns, richly draped with formations resulting from a variety of mineral deposits. The Chifley Cave, named after a former Prime Minister, was the first cave in the world to be lit by electric light when it was opened in 1880.
The Janolan Caves is the longest continually operating tourist attraction in the state and is claimed to be the oldest discovered open caves in the world. Not that they were actually lost. For thousands of years, Aboriginal people from many nations came to the caves to bathe in the pools of Nadyang. They penetrated the caves as far as the subterranean water carrying their sick to be bathed in this water, which they believe to have great curative powers. After that awe-inspiring tour, it was on to our overnight accommodation at Oberon, with a stop for more snow on the way. Frost covered almost everything in sight and the fog hung low as we left our cosy motel. Alex led us back down the road towards the Janolan Caves before turning off the bitumen and onto the Kanangara Walls Road. The sun soon burnt off the fog to reveal a clear blue sky. Well, today we're on day two of our Caves to Caves tour and uh, we're heading out to the Kanangra Walls Lookout. Um, it's a beautiful day today. We had a little bit of a cold night, but our beautiful hotel was uh, kept us nice and warm. Nice hearty breakfast. And after here, we're going to our, our mission is to head to uh, Wombian Caves. So, uh, Caves to Caves, here we go, day two. It was a perfect day to view the walls and Mount Cloudmaker, though on this occasion it wasn't living up to its name. This was one of the best high country views that we had seen. Kanangra tops have a completely different geology to the other sandstone dominated landforms which comprise the rest of the Blue Mountains. The Kanangra walls are the fringing fault scarp of a rim rock area comprised of rock types including quartzite and granite. Backtracking from the Walls Lookout, we eventually turned onto Banshee Road, which took us into Dingo Dell. On the way we came across a valley that had not yet seen the warm rays of the sun. Any water lying around, as well as the creek, had a thin layer of ice on it. An inquisitive wallaby looked up from its feed of grass as we pulled into Dingo Dell. Although it is a pleasant site for a camp, the only facilities are a pit toilet or two. From there, it was a steady climb up Mount Weirong to an entrance and an information board 
that welcome visitors to Blue Mountains National Park. We are now travelling on a section of the Oberon Kolong Historic Stock Route. We stopped for a while at the Ruby Creek Walking Track campsite and set up for lunch. The girls found that the wildlife was quite approachable. The local wallabies created quite a bit of interest, especially when it was suspected that one had a joey in its pouch. It was that movement down below that gave it away. Just when we were about to move off, an inquisitive nose and eyes appeared, much to the delight of the group. Alex led the group to Rain's Fire Trail, Duncan's Flat and the windy road into Wombian Caves. Wombian Caves is an extensive series of beautiful limestone caves situated in a 417 hectare reserve. A sign at the cave's car park informed visitors of the wildlife found in the area, but there was no mention of goats, which are not welcome. All right. After organising the entry payments, Alex gathered up our group and pointed us in the direction of the fig tree cave. Access to the caves is via a token operated door, which is a short walk from the visitor centre. From there, it is a totally hands-free experience, with the interpretation and lighting electronically controlled. Fig Tree Cave is regarded as New South Wales' premier self-guided cave experience. First opened for inspection in the 1870s, it was named after a large fig tree growing near its entrance. The cave forms the underground route for Wombian Creek and has three different parts. The first part is considered as inactive or fossil with impressive formations. The second part is a narrow creek section. The third part leads up to a huge cabin. As we exited the impressive Victoria Arch, we realised our tour was coming to an end. Thanks to Alex and our travelling companion, our Caves to Caves adventure had been friendly, informative and most enjoyable. This is definitely a must-see area of New South Wales Blue Mountains. <laughs>